Hello, I am Jyoti Kakpariya, Associate Professor and Art Curator. I am very happy to have with us today Mr. Siddharth Tagore, an Indian gallerist who has been in the art field for over 30 years. We are here to talk about art valuation. Welcome, Mr. Siddharth. Thank you. Siddharth Tagore is an eminent gallerist. He established Art Consult over three decades back with the vision of promoting contemporary Indian art globally. The gallery has over 500 exhibitions to its credit, featuring both prominent artists of Indian and foreign origin. Mr. Siddharth Tagore is the editor of Art & Deal magazine, one of the finest print magazines in the Indian art scene. Mr. Tagore is also in auction art business. He started Art Deal Auction House in 2016. He has been in this business since 2012. Under the banner of Art and Deal, Mr. Tagore has produced films on indigenous Indian arts and tribal and folk arts of India. He has also produced documentary films on prominent contemporary artists, Arpanakar and G.R. Irana. Uh, so, whereas there is a note that we can find on the web regarding art valuation in the West, but when it comes to India, there is a paucity of information. So, let us start with asking, what is art valuation vis-a-vis -vis the Indian art scene, and what are the parameters of art valuation in India? Uh, we would also like to know about art valuation regarding different ages of art in India, like... You know, it's very important to know the valuation of particular piece of art in the sense that suppose you're buying one work and you're keeping, you're not bought it for reselling or anything, but it's always good to know the valuation, whether it is for your own personal listing or for insurance purpose, or if you ever want to decide to part with that particular work, then it is necessary that you know the valuation. Now, there are many criteria for evaluating a piece of art. Let me come to the market strategy first. How do you evaluate a piece of art? First of all, who the artist is. Now, if this artist is of a very great repute, if he is a master artist, then you are sure that there is certain bracket this particular, particular painting will fetch. Provided the provenance of that painting is very good, the authenticity of that painting is very good, and it has whether it has been published in any particular book before, so that leads to an extra provenance, character to the provenance. All these things play a very important role. Apart from that, you see, how do you evaluate? Now you have to also look at the painting, whether the painting is in mint condition or not. If it is a damaged piece, if it has been restored, when was it restored, who restored it, all this thing comes into the thing. Now restored paintings, the prices goes down as far as unrestored paintings are concerned. Yeah. These are some of the parameters which I have just mentioned you for modern and contemporary arts. Yes, so if we go to antiquity. Now, you see, in India, we do not have that kind of antiquity market which is there in the West. It's a very new market, I know, as far as antiquities are concerned. I know that in 2004 or five, uh, the one auction, a big auction house, came for the first time and did an, an auction of antiquities. Results were not that great compared to the West because there are many problems in Indian antiquities. First of all, you cannot export them if it is over 100 years old. Secondly, you have to have them registered with ASI. So when these two criteria come and then registration, when you register with ASI, a whole lot of other problems come. I believe 
you have to make you have to mention the location of that particular piece if you mention a location a and if you shift it to location b you have to inform the asi otherwise it's it's not legal in that in these kind of criteria people do not know how to deal with antiquities but things are getting easier if you take an opinion from the expert antiquities uh, people they will give you the guidelines which is already there from the size booklet which is this yes so with the same norms would work for company art also yeah if it is over 100 years old whether it is uh, um, uh, sculptures stone sculptures gupta period or whether mica paintings of uh, company period if they are over 100 years old it is under the antiquities act we would also like to know about pre modern art now again that's very interesting do some of them they may not fall into the criteria of antiquities but the 12 uh, uh, artists who have been declared as national treasures you cannot export them also but you don't need to register them and but you within india you can sell but you can't sell it export it outside india and uh, that's one of the reason why it's not getting international uh, people to come and bid for this artists which have the has been declared as national treasures so if some person wants to buy an andalal vase or a jamini or a dekhe a foreign investors cannot really come no. buy them because no yes yes you cannot buy them. that's the reason why the prices of antiquities and the national treasure which should have gone 20 times more it has not happened that's very interesting uh what about modern art Modern art is something. This is where the whole crux is. Whether you take it in art history, whether you take it for art valuation, then begins with modern art, yeah. and that is something which why so much of promotion in art has come because of the modern artists who have been written by many authors and people have started reading. Awareness came because of them in art. I mean, historical art. Everybody knows they've read, but they have seen it in the museum, and maybe with few collectors, private collectors. But as far as modern art is concerned, you can see it everywhere in art galleries. You can see it in museum. You can see it in private collection. That's the reason the prices of modern art has gone up very high compared to their predecessor or antiquities. So uh when it comes to valuation of modern art what is your advice My advice is study the auction results for the last 5 years you'll get to have some idea about the average Also see what the galleries are offering the same because sometimes you can get a painting in the gallery for x amount and in the auction you get the same work for minus x why it all depends where auction your nobody can compel you to bid until unless so they see the thing reserve price in auction or they have a reserve price you have lower estimate and you have higher estimate so if somebody bids it on the lower estimate or reserve price he gets it if there is no feature for the bidding which is easy to acquire it galleries they may give you discount but then they have a price which is not one fixed price not that this is the estimate price so this is the higher estimate price they have one fixed price here ideally speaking auction house should give you a very transparent uh the same for valuation not galleries because you don't know they might say it's for 50 lakhs they might sell it for 30 lakhs now in similarly many auction i have seen the works which is available in the market for x amount it goes for x into 500x why should people buy from an auction house for 500x when the work is available in the market for x amount these are the things which give some doubt over what is happening and some people can buy there's no the thing where i'm not ruling out that i will bid for this work up to this much it happened to many of the artists yeah. 
without this maybe the subject matter reveals them many things are attributed for the valuation not just how good the condition is or how even the subject matters the period also matters which period like i would say some of the masters work works of 1960s and 70s are the ideally probably they consider that even the historian considers the best works produced later on slight difference in style but they because of the growth in market and demand they have been producing where they would concentrate x amount of time during 60s and 70s when there was no market now they were producing maybe five works more so obviously i don't say the quality deteriorates but people feel that that they would prefer to have if they have the money to kind of buy only particular work of 1960s or 70s as far as the modernist is concerned as far as the contemporary art is concerned very difficult to evaluate it we go by what it has been bought from the gallery there's only one auction house who is doing the contemporary art but then they are doing it only in the secondary uh, line of auctions i would say for example uh, if you take story limited this thing where you can get people out always find it interesting to bid from there because you get a chance to lap of things at a very reasonable price and mainly the contemporary artists have seen that but then there are many great contemporary artists for example subodh gupta or tul dodia who is the price will, they will never come into the such kind of bracket of works but they'll find always a very high bharti kher Uh, I think uh, way back uh, uh, in 2010, she faced 10 ten crores for one particular work. So what Gupta told her to do, then Anjum told her to do. These are some of the artists, Jitish Kalar, who have been looked at almost at par with masters. So uh, coming back to galleries and auction houses, uh, the question that I am wanting to ask is this: that if there is a work of art which is rare. so that we do uh, that it makes sense to buy that from the auction or maybe send it to the auction but if the work is um of an artist which is easily available or available then now uh, would you say that taking it from a gallery would be more financial sense or is there no correlation see i was running an auction house so many of my client i said yeah, we don't like to bid i don't know we are very uh, averse to kind of bidding you tell me the price i'll pay you for it from the gallery this easy comfortable factor is there and when you're doing uh, whether it's online or whether you're going physically some people do not even like to show their face when they're buying a particular piece of art whether in auction house or they send their secretary to go up to this much and bid up to if you get it it's fine otherwise leave it So these are the kind of thing problem in auction. Auction in the West is something very different. You have a different kind of crowd, and you have a different kind of clients who are coming voraciously to bid for maybe one particular work. So it fetches in crores, which is not does not happen in India, or it's not yet started. Maybe it will happen after a few years or so. market is going very strong it's increasing day by day prices are also doubling and trebling of each and every art artifacts here now when it comes to evaluating art you know as far as the income tax rule is concerned and this thing there is a section called us 50a i think if i'm not uh, wrong you have to take certain uh the thing for evaluating a piece of art it has to be first what it was done film do evaluating in 2023 you have to take in consideration what it was priced in 2001 then in 2017 what was the price so if 2001 it was 20 rupees in 2017 it had the jump will be 300 times this is as per the income tax act 
and today is 2023 you put another 5 years 6 years so i add another 20% on 2017 price and come to some kind of a average to work out the price of a painting even for insurance purpose you need to have if you don't have bills if you don't have the thing so well, many people bought many things without bills and things like that the art was not even considered that time as a valuable item you know so there was no value so but how do you you have it today something in great master how do you value it then then this is the thing of you go back to 2001 2017 and 2022 and if you're an individual there is 30% tax which you have to pay the income tax uh on on the price you get it for and 20% i think 20 or 30 i'm not sure about it right this is how the valuation of art market is all about there are many other things also i would like to say there are some of the artists uh they're very emotional i have worked with this this great masters you know why my prices there is no art answer to that particular thing this i would put them under emotional uh context why because these are the artists who have never been in forefront and today want to come into the market which is not going to be a easy thing until and unless somebody backs it many of the art galleries have bought in bulk and they want to promote those artists how do they do one of the reason to know let people know is to bid through the auction so they make a dummy uh, uh seller in the auction and they will bid you know the price goes from 5 rupees it goes to 50 rupees then they announce the price of this artist has gone to 50 rupees but in reality it doesn't work one painting cannot in one year if it goes for 50 rupees is not going to set the ball it has to be number of uh the thing uh options certain basic the thing has to be followed as far as the pricing is concerned average I so uh, coming back to the modernists uh, if we look at that on their or they have made that they are the kind of valuation absolutely Tayyab and Gaitone are today probably fetching the highest price uh, price in the Indian art uh context here yeah. i mean people are expecting that gaitonde's price would almost touch the european masters or the american masters so with the uh, that's because the number of works they have produced are much more limited in context to the other modernists i wouldn't like to name them but everybody knows i'm um, So now what happens in Thai when we come the price position of the super rich people to acquire one particular work with the Swaraj Ravi Verma or Gaitonde Ravi Verma has not fresh that high because again I told you about the problem of uh being one of the national treasure artist he cannot be exported out but Thai when Gaitonde come you have a lot of international bidder for it whether they are international means they are whether they are indians and arais or think they have the sentiments to buy these artists and hang it in their wall it's a huge status symbol uh also if you notice that in india many big uh, corporate people are now building museums and if you see that people are really looking for good works but there are no good works available so much what it was available even 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago so the price will go up whoever has a good work they know it and they can command any price for that particular work 
So you've done valuation for many clients. Could you tell us something about the clients and the kind of valuation that you? I've been doing valuation for almost uh, last 15, 16 years, I would say. 2008, uh, the customs people called me to evaluate some of the works which they came there. Not officially, but they told me that if you can evaluate, and I saw they were all garbage, and I said, don't waste your time in getting it. Now, I've done a lot of evaluation even for the insurance purpose for some of my clients, which they need to get it. And see, every year, I see that there is a jump in 5 to 10%, 15%. You have to be very basic in that kind of evaluation. Recently, I did for a very big client of mine some 45,000 works evaluation. And uh, these are the criteria I used. Uh, seeing the auction result, seeing this thing. Now, if you ask me, there is no official evaluator in India with a degree in evaluation unlike in the West. So, so we and Christie's may offer you this course, but in India, we do not have. We have valuation courses only for real estate property, not for art. And uh, you need the degrees, engineering degree or business management or something like that. But when I said that I am from heritage management background, they said you don't fill into the criteria. I'm talking about quite some time back. So it's through experience, being in the market, you have to be always updated what is going what, what is not going, uh, selling well. This thing you have to always have it in your fingertips and that's how the valuation starts. So, uh, what about any independent valuation agencies in India? No, there are no. So it's primarily by the auction houses and the guns. See, auction house, when it comes to it, they put a value to it. There is a thing called reserve price, lower estimate than that. Now, their valuation is done, they know. Of course, past thing does matter to them, they have experience. And if they feel they can sell this work for a particular amount, then only they will. Sometimes the price is given very low, generally, and it fetches three times the price. This is also another way of showing that this particular artist has gone three times up. It happens in many of the auction houses. They deliberately keep it low so that it goes up. If you have some fierce bidder like that, then it's worth doing it. Otherwise, a small auction house shouldn't take a chance. They should stick to the basic here. Yeah. And don't estimate, maybe it touches higher estimate you're good enough. So uh, there's another question that I want to ask you. Not everyone can afford to buy a modernist or a theater about a guy on the contemporary art. Do you have any um, suggestion? I really don't want to suggest any guy. I'm telling you, I'll give you an example which happened 25, 30 years. We did one exhibition of a watercolorist from Bengal. And that time his prices were four or 5,000 rupees. The whole show was sold out. And people were saying that he is at par with other great watercolorists and this and that. After one year, that guy left art. So what happens? Yeah, these are things, many things like this come where your valuation of that art is not even worth today X amount. So, Halfway through people leave their career. You're promoting, you're promoting, and then they, if they quit, you are in a bad soup. It's not very easy to promote an artist. You have to do many things to make him to come at par and then put them in the auction house and get them bid and all this. And if the artists leave their halfway through. Uh, so there's another thing that I would want to ask you coming from, I mean, and they, we talked to collectors and they had some works of art and they have not really, the prices are not what they had expected it to be. In fact, sometimes yes, it goes down. Because what are you doing in this kind of situation? Just listen, think, uh, you are right, really right. Many people 
they see the results of Christie's and Sotheby's for one particular artist. It went for 50 lakhs. But in reality, it won't fetch more than 5 lakhs. Exactly. To go up to 50 lakhs, you have to do many things. They have, everybody knows Christie's branding and price range. And they also know that this will go up to this much. But it doesn't happen in in the primary or secondary market. I get a lot of calls from various people, I want to put my work in the auction. I said, I'm tired sometimes to receive such calls somewhere. And young girls. And I said, I'm sorry, we are not doing any art auctions right now, but try some other auction also. The, um, you see the trend in the art market, everybody and everybody wants to come into the art market. Artists, whether professional artists means got graduation from a proper degree college or not, a self-taught housewife, they all want to make art and sell. I should, one shouldn't encourage that. I mean, you will say, as a professional, I would say, he may be a, he or she may be a self. All these modern masters are self-taught. Many of them were self-taught. But they have contributed for over four or five decades. So these people can come today and they want to become as soon so many this thing in the auction. No. So it doesn't really do any justice to either to the market or for themselves. So one thing that I wanted to talk to you about was insurance art insurance and uh, evaluation. Yes, for insurance purpose also they insist on getting it evaluated, the piece of work, because the insurance people are not competent as well as capable of understanding art and their pricing. Therefore it is very necessary that they get a proper evaluation done from a competent authority. This is what happens when the insurance people also insist today that, now suppose you're sending a work abroad and it is necessary that you insure that piece of particular work. It might, you might use that particular work. No way you can claim it unless it is insured. So it's, it's necessary that way. We are very happy to have Mr. Tagore with us today.